pretty crystal clear what the benefits are whenever you set boundaries around your creativity. When you implement these standards in your life, you're going to meet deadlines and goals. You're going to set clear expectations for the people in your life. You're going to prevent creative burnout and personal burnout because by protecting your creativity, you prevent burnout in other areas of your life. And you're going to put your well being first and foremost. And I want to explore this one for a second because it's really important. I know for me, when I have allowed all the other things to come before my creative life, I feel depressed, unfulfilled. I'm like, I'll never be successful at this writing thing. And so by setting these standards around our creative selves, we improve our well being by simply feeding our souls. So it's really important. And then finally, um, you get to spend time with the things that fill you, not drain you. I think that's very important. Okay, let's see. There it goes. Um, okay, so next I'm going to show three slides that are examples of how to set and hold healthy boundaries around your creativity. Um, so Heather Demetrios is an author, coach, editor, and mindfulness mentor. And she says that saying yes to your best work means saying no to others, including your pesky inner critic. And she also goes on to say that without setting these boundaries, you don't give your creativity the chance to really shine. And like with anything, it needs attention and nurturing to thrive. And so these three examples are how she sets boundaries around her creative time to protect it. So on this current slide, I'm in on every slide, the, the two arrows in the middle of the circle represent your creativity. And the four shapes surrounding the arrows represent the healthy boundaries that you're going to use to boundary and protect your creative time. So this first boundary is scheduling your creativity and making it non-negotiable in your life. So you don't cancel important doctor's appointments to go chill with the best friend, right? No, you schedule time and your weekly or daily planner and you, uh, you go to your doctor. So why are we not treating our creativity and our writing the same way. So put it in your planner, schedule that time and don't let anything encroach upon it. And like, if you have kids, enforce the boundary that playtime will not happen in the office, living room, dining room, or wherever else it is that you write during this planned writing session. And you have to relentlessly enforce your boundary around this time. Don't cancel unless the house is on fire or there's another pressing emergency. Your current Netflix binge and to-do list can wait, trust me, this is your time. And the action item that Ms. Demetrius suggests is to look at your schedule and find all the possible pockets of time for your creativity and to let anyone who might try to breach this boundary, um, let them know that this time is non-negotiable. Um, for example, if your kids generally go down for a nap after lunch, they're down for 45 minutes to an hour-ish, shut off your phone and use that time to write and boundary set around that time. Don't let anybody call you or interrupt you during that time. This is your sacred time. This is your creating time. And, and you let them know, don't interrupt me unless it's an emergency. And defend that boundary and dole out consequences if they don't, you know, respect that boundary. Also, find someone to hold you accountable, like Quill and Cup. Keep your promises to yourself. Um, 